What is up guys, this is Linthio coming at you with part 2 of 3 of my Forbidden Unlimited list in-depth discussion. Today we are going to be talking about the spell cards that are currently forbidden in the game. So starting us off, we have Brain Control at the top of the list, banned in 2010 in September. Pay 800 life points, take a monster. Well, Brain Control is kind of in the same boat as Snatch Deal. Uh, and change your heart because they all revolve around taking your opponent's monster uh, and being able to do a couple of different things with it. Brain Control is just one of these cards that is just really, really good because it can't be really chained to. So Snatch Deal, even though it was banned, I'll get to it in a little bit, you could chain like a destructional cost on it, a destructional card in like an MST or a, a Twin Twister, something like that. But Brain Control, you would have to actually negate the actual card or prevent the target in some way, shape or form, maybe make the monster that unaffected by spell cards. Brain Control is a really, really good card, and any card that changes the actual possession of a monster is always going to be good if there is no particular downside. And even if there is a downside, like Mind Control, where you can't really do anything with it apart from Synchro Summon or Igzy, it's still really good, and Mind Control's at 1 for that exact reason, because it can be abusable. And at worst case, even if you can't do anything with it, you're moving it out of the way so you can possibly go in with some attacks on your opponent's life points. So Brain Control, I believe, is a card that should probably stay banned because it does revolve around the whole changing uh, possession and it's never a good thing, as we saw with Snatch Deal very recently. Butterfly Dagger Valm is next. Oh dear god, this card. Um, so it was basically instantly limited uh, when the actual list came out in 2003 and then it was banned in 2005 in uh, April, I do believe, and if you don't know why this card's banned, it's because you comboed it with Gear Freed, the Iron Knight, and Royal Magical Library, yes, once again, Royal Magical Library was one of the original cards that caused OTKs and loops, and or it was more FDK if I'm completely honest, because there was no player interaction, so the way that it worked is you would have Royal Magical Library out and Gear Freed, the Iron Knight, equip Elmer to Gearfreed, because Gearfreed, you, uh, if there was an equip on it, you would instantly destroy it. Elmer would go to the grave, then Elmer would go to your hands, but then you would also add a counter onto Royal Magical Library, and you would literally just loop and draw your entire deck in that turn. And you would win with Exodia, that was the way that you won with that deck. The reason why this card can never come back is because Royal Magical Library exists. If Royal Magical Library exists... Butterfly Dagger Elma can come back, in my opinion, simply because that loop is no longer there. Sure, you can you can have an everlasting game state of just equipping it to Gaia, but uh, Gear Freed, sorry, but it's not going to do anything, and it doesn't actually you know go to any end goal. So Elma is an amber only because of Raw Magic Library, which probably should be banned if I'm completely honest. Uh, you know, it's it's still there, so Elma should unfortunately not come back until that is gone. Alternatively, you can just add a once per turn clause on Elma, and it would kind of get rid of the whole thing. Next up, we have Card Destruction, banned in 2013 in September, and this card's insane. Uh, it was obviously notably used with Dark World, being able to get incredible amounts of pluses from one card effect. Also, it was used with Dragon Rulers, uh, I, I can think I remember, uh, because you could just dump all the dragons into the graveyard and it would be no problem. This card can be a amber if I'm completely honest. It's a very, very powerful card and probably shouldn't come back, but it all depends on what's happening in the meta. Now with pendulums, it would devastate so many pendulum decks if they had to get rid of loads of cards in their hand and they would all go to the graveyard because it's much more difficult to choose the pendulums out of the graveyard. Uh, obviously, there are cards that do do it, which is fine, but card destruction is just an incredible card that should probably stay banned, but Konami can try it out at some point depending on how the format is going, as long as there aren't uh, decks that really benefit from multiple uh, discard effects or effects in the graveyard. Card of Safe Return banned in 2009 September. One, I will just say I love this card because I used it with zombies. However, Card of Safe Return should never come back. Special summoning from the graveyard is always going to be, I think, some key part of this game. I don't think they'll ever banish it from the actual mechanics of the game, how decks work and such, 
But obviously this was used with zombies and it was just absolutely insane. Being able to draw every time a monster was special summoned from the graveyard, wow. So that's kind of ridiculous. And if you just think of so many different decks now that can really abuse it, yeah, you kind of get the point. So card is saved for turn. Don't really need to say too much about it. Uh, it wasn't banned. Actually, well, it actually was banned six years ago now going on. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of, uh, kind of ridiculous. But yeah, card save for turn. Never come back. Uh, you know, so stay as a red. Again, you could errata it, but still probably shouldn't come back. Cold Wave, 2011 in March this one was. And yeah, this card's pretty good. And I don't think you should ever come back. Being able to lock down you, uh, anything that happens with spell or traps for uh, like a turn until your turn is kind of ridiculous. It promotes OTK decks. It promotes all of these disgusting things that can possibly go through and happen. And Cold Wave is just an unhealthy card and a badly designed one at that. So it should never really come back. Confiscation bans in September 2007 and you know pay a thousand life points look at your opponent's hand select one card and discard it. Confiscation is an incredibly good card obviously looking at your opponent's hand and gaining the actual knowledge of what is in there is huge. Being able to activate it first turn really gives your opponent a very unfair advantage. Because you know exactly what they're going to do and you know exactly what combos they're going to also make. But on top of that, the knowledge that you know what deck they're playing, if you do activate it first turn, means that you can uh, slightly alter your plays depending on you know what you actually think they're playing. Because you know what they're playing. So the card is absolutely insane and it probably could be an amber if all in all fairness, but probably should not come back, I think. It's, it's one of those ones that's a little bit weird. But I don't think it should come back because looking at your opponent's hand, gaining that amount of advantage and uh, knowledge and just for a thousand life points and then also discarding a card is just so good. Delinquent Duo. Well, this card was uh, last banned in 2005, in September 2005. <sighs> yeah, Delinquent Duo, such an incredible card. Pay a thousand life points. Take a card out of your opponent's hand, then they have to take one out. It's just so good. The amount of uh, advantage you just gain from activating one card is just absolutely insane. You minus two your opponent, and especially if it's in their first turn. Oh, wow, they could only play with four cards once they drew. This card is just the pinnacle of really unfair old school cards that were around back in the day. And it should never come back, really, because it is a seriously unfair card. If you get this first turn... Wow, your opponent is going to be struggling, and especially with pendulums now, and they go to the graveyard, it's not really that great. Future Fusion was banned in 2012, not too long ago if you really think about it, considering some of them on the list. But Future Fusion was used in the Disaster Dragon era. It was one of these cards that I feel is still a really, really unbalanced card. It, it, I've always said it aged incorrectly, and the way that I mean is... Konami started building certain cards and releasing certain cards and making them that they kind of forgot about Future Fusion and how it worked. When Future Fusion was out, they had Five-Headed Dragon. No one really thought too much of it. Then Disaster Dragon came. Then you had Eclipse Wyvern. Then you had all these things. Then it was a problem. Future Fusion was one of the times when you would basically just win if you w opened it. Because it was so impossible to stop. The amount of advantage they would gain from this one simple card was insane. And Future Fusion, as long as things like that are around, it can't come back. So it's the definition of an amber card. Simply because it's fine if there's no decks in the game that can use it. And it's terribly unbalanced if there are decks in the in the format that can use it gateway the six samurai in september 2013 nope never want to see this back don't care what you say the advantage samurai's got from this card nope when it was at three nope <laughs> disclaimer i hate samurais i hate his going up against them and it was just so annoying because you'd just be sit there watching them be like yeah i'm just gonna make this unbreakable board Shien with dojo with Gateway, with Notoria Beast, with Notoria Barkeon, and you just sat there like, wow, this is great. But uh, Gateway is a seriously unfair card. If anyone opened it, it was just stupid. I honestly don't know how some decks lost when they had this card. Giant Grenade, one of the old school cards in 2011, finally got its banishment. What can you say about a card that returns all spell and trap cards to the ha owner's hand? It paves the way for OTKs, and that is simply why it probably should never come back. 
because you could just activate it and then carry on with your turn like nothing ever happened with the removal of anything if you think of it now imagine if you've got like three solemn strikes set and your opponent activated giant grenade and then proceeded to otk you seriously unfair right graceful chariot has been banned since 2007 um the card's just absolutely incredible being able to draw two and then discard two is just insane simply because of the discard effect it's so good. Not only being able to deck then drawing three brand new cards in your hand is great. Even if you activate Graceful Charity with no hand. Most notably used with a lot of different decks. You know, you could just get your Sinister Serpent out of your hand back in the day and be able to just add it back. So that was some of the free advantage you would get because it'd be basically like not discarding a card. Graceful Charity is a card that should probably never come back. It's such an incredible draw card that is just far too good for this game. And will never really be power creeped. Harpy's Feather Duster. Banned in 2004 in April. 2004. It's been so long. 12 years for the TCG. The OCG have one copy of this card right now. And it's a very, very different thing to talk about. And one that promotes a lot of different discussion and arguments in the community. Harpy's Feather Duster can be compared to Raigeki. But where people's interpretation of these two cards and the comparison falls flat with Raigeki destroying monsters. Monsters have built in type of recovery effects, certain ones anyway, that if it would be destroyed then it would do something. So if you think of like Burning Abyss they would kind of uh, do a certain thing. With spell and traps that is not the case. If you destroy a spell or trap card nine out of ten times in the meta, if not higher in the meta, nothing will happen. The card will just be destroyed and you've generated free pluses. Harpy's Feather Duster is an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly good card. And is also very much like Heavy Storm, which is ironically next in the list. Harpy's and Heavy Storm are just incredible. Harpy's Feather Duster, I think, is an amber. Depending on what's happening in the format, it could be tried out, much like in the OCG. We have some type of similar, uh, similar thing, similar formats in the OCG to the TCG, even though we are a little bit late. But Harpy's Feather Duster not only blowing out back row, but then blowing out the scales as well of your opponent's pendulums is really, really big. Amber, I think, it can come back depending on how the format is shaping and going, and if Konami feel brave that they want to give Harpy's Feather Duster to a brand new era of. Yu-Gi-Oh players. Going on to Heavy Storm as well. Heavy Storm was banned uh, in 2010 for us and it's still I think used in the OCG. I can't remember off the top of my head um, but it might be banned now in the end of 2014 I think. Heavy Storm was one of the more balanced destruction cards because even though it could be used like Harpy's Feather Duster if you didn't have any back row you could just activate it and wipe out your opponent's entire back row. It was still a very good card, but quite balanced in the sense that I think Heavy Storm is probably one of those cards that could come back. And I think having it at 1 is probably going to be fairly decent. If you look at the format now, how we have Twin Twister, Twin Twister is an incredibly good card. Being able to pop two spell and trap cards on your opponent's side of the field is really good. What I really liked about Heavy Storm is it kept Yu-Gi-Oh players in check, and it punished bad players. When it was around uh, for us... It allowed us to really test the duelist we were up against. If they went set 4 or 5 and passed, and you activated Heavy Storm, and they didn't have a response, it really taught them a lesson. In that era, you had to have some form of protection. Whether it be a Starlight Road or anything like that, you needed to be able to protect your back row from a Heavy Storm. If you didn't, you were really, really putting it all on the line. And if you got Heavy Stormed, in my opinion, it was your own damn fault. Heavy Storm punished bad players and rewarded good players because if they set, say, two and your opponent Heavy Storms, then they would still possibly have back row to be able to protect themselves next turn and punish the opponent for using their one blowout card. I think Heavy Storm could be tried at one. I would like to see it come back again. And uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. Last Will was banned 2007. No, OTK, FTK. Let's just not do this again, please. Even though my name is Will. I don't want to see Last Will back in this game. And uh, honestly, that's all I'm going to talk about. Because this card brings back so many bad memories. Mass Driver 2011 was basically just an OTK, FTK card. It was used just to tribute your monsters on your side of the field. And then flick 400 damage to them. 
But the thing was, it just created ridiculous loops. It was used in like the Giga, uh, Giga Plant OTK and also the Frog Burn OTK, and most notably Frog Burn OTK within uh, the being used as substitute and you know all this stuff. You you kind of realised how it would work because you would uh, use it with all the other toads to just generate a ridiculous amount of damage on board. The card should not come back because. At its core, it is a bad design. Tribute monsters on your side of the field to inflict damage to your opponent. Knowing that we can just generate so many cards on our side of the field is just dumb. So, Mass Driver should never ever really come back. Metamorphosis, banned 2007 in September. I actually want this card to come back. Now, you might be like, whoa, what are you doing, Olympia, yo? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's kind of weird, isn't it? But Metamorphosis is a really solid card that was just so fun back in the day, being able to, you know, metamorphosis one of your scapegoat tokens into a thousand eyes restrict was kind of good. But now it's not that great. We don't have a lot of really great fusions. And I guess you could technically metamorphosis into like a Norden or anything like that. But honestly, putting it at one, I can't really see much happening with metamorphosis. So I would really love for Konami to release it and try it out. Mirage and Nightmare banned in 2005. Yeah, this card can also stay banned forever as far as I'm concerned. It was just ridiculous. I don't get who actually decided to make this one live, but whatever. Um, Mirage and Nightmare constantly drawing cards and then you can just discard them as well by the obviously card text. You would just use it to your advantage and it would just be so easy to pull off. So Mirage and Nightmare was a very unfair card. It still is a very unfair card and anything to do with drawing is normally a bad thing. Uh, for this day and age and any just game state of Yu-Gi-Oh! and meta, so Mirage and Nightmare needs to stay banned. Monster Reborn. Monster Reborn is a very interesting card. It's been banned and unbanned and banned and unbanned multiple times, but most recently for us was 2004. OCG still have it, and it is one of those cards that I think would be really nice just to have in the game at one. With the predominance of Pendulums, Pendulums would have it, but they can't really make a massive use of Monster Reborn. Obviously, the Xyz and the Synchros and any Pendulums that do go to the graveyard through whatever type of effect can be revived, and also your opponent's monsters can be revived. I always felt that it was a really nice card. I think it's one of the creator's favorite cards as well, and that's why it kept coming back and forth. But I think Konami might have banished this to the Shadow Realm for a very long time because it was just a very unfair card, and it kind of still is. But I think it should be a nice one to consider bringing back. It should be a great card. And yeah, maybe Amber. We could try that on an Amber. We could try that at a 1. And you know, worst case, we can just ban it again. Painful Choice. This is one of the longest banned cards. Pretty much the same as Yatagarasu and all these. But this was banned originally in 2005. It was banned in 2004, then, on, then limited, and then banned once again. Yeah, this card can... Go die for all I care. The amount of advantage you would be able to just gain from it. It was insane. It was unbelievable. Back in the day, you would use it to load up your graveyard and then summon out your chaos monsters for one. And now, just think of it. Light Swarms would have an absolute field day with it. Anything that, you know, used a graveyard. Zombies. Performer pals. Anything. Now, it would just be insane. Painful Choice was a very badly designed card and should never, ever, ever come back. Pot of Avarice was first banned for us in 2013 during the uh, plant format, I think it was. And I actually think Pot of Avarice can come back. Now, shuffling five monsters in the graveyard into your deck and then drawing two is a very, very good effect. Obviously, I love Pot of Avarice because it allowed me to play it in things like Junk Doppel and also Heretics and everything like that just for nice free advantage. And it is an insanely good card. But I actually don't think it's as good in meta decks anymore. It would give an incredible boost to all non-meta decks and lower tiered decks, certainly. Maybe being able to revive a couple of different decks, but I don't think it would actually provide that much insane scenarios that people wouldn't be able to deal with. I think Pot of Avarice could be a really great card at a one just to try out. Pot of Greed, banned in 2005. That format in 2005 was a very prolific one. You're probably starting to understand now. 
Pot of Greed is a very strange one because there are very good arguments to bring it back and very good arguments to keep it banned. One of the things I will say is in this game, generic plus oneing is always a bad idea because it's just unfair. If you activate Pot of Greed and you have no hand, you suddenly have two cards in your hand. If you're on the receiving end of that and then your opponent makes a push and wins the game, what does that say? Now if you think of pendulums we have, if you break your opponent's scales and they have loads of pendulums but they don't have anything to act, they don't have any scales, they draw it into a Pot of Greed. Then they draw it into two scales that they can set and then summon everything out. How goddamn unfair would that be? Pot of Greed needs to stay banned for me personally because a generic plus one is just unfair. Premature Burial banned in 2008. One of the reasons why this card is ridiculous is because it is an equip spell and it can be abused. Just think of, for example, Satellanites. You can just trevor it back to your hand and just keep doing it. And that was the whole point of Premature Burial. You pay a measly 800 life points, special summon one of the monsters out of your graveyard. And then just do what you want with it. You would just keep sending it back to your hand in multiple different ways. So it's a very insanely good card. And if we had it now, we would use it with... Many people would start to use it with like Hidden Armory just to search it out and constantly abuse it. Any of these equip spell cards with Hidden Armory is just too good. So honestly, Premature Burial needs to stay banned because of the unrelenting combos and loops it can actually generate. Snatch Deal... Well, I'm sure a lot of us remember Snatch Deal, and maybe not because you've played in the older formats, because it was unbanned not too long ago last year, and then it was banned straight away. For very good reason, Snatch Deal is an insane card, much like Card of Safe Return and Change of Heart. The cards are just absolutely insane, and I do believe that it's just so good, and it should stay banned. Konami tried their test with it, it didn't go very well, and it was just insanely unfair, so Snatch Deal needs to stay banned. Change of Heart is the exact same as Brain Control and Snatch Deal, but you could do absolutely anything you want with the card. It was the original card, the original stealing your monster, and you could do whatever you want with it. For that reason, it needs to stay banned, because having free reign on your opponent's monster to do anything with it, attack, tribute, exe, synchro, anything, no, nope, no good. Spellbook of Judgment, banned in 2013. I'm sure we all remember this one. Not going to talk about it too much because it should never come back. A card that can generate that much fucking advantage. And not only that, be able to special summon a monster which was normally Jalgen to lock your opponent out. Super unfair, super stupid, never come back. Super Polymerization was banned uh, in the early years of 2000, well, the early days of 2015, last year. Pretty much around the time we are now, it's coming up to its year anniversary, and Super Poly is a really great card. The whole aspect of quote-unquote Speed Spell 4 effects where you can't respond to them is just pretty much ridiculous. Anything that has that type of clause is always good. Super Polymerization is arguably a ridiculous card, especially with Norden and all this stuff. So I think for now it's an Amber card because it always depends on what cards are actually out and available. Heroes are still a very good thing, so Super Poly is still a really good card. So I'd say Amber depending on how the format is going. Super Rejuvenation, this card generates too much advantage for what it's worth. It was obviously used in the Dragon Ruler days. You could try it coming back because I don't think it would be able to generate as many draws now simply because the dragon rulers aren't a thing dragons are still ish around the blue eyes deck might actually be able to abuse this when it comes out in the next set so super rejuve is an amber depending on what's going down in the format it is going to be a weird one so i say let's stay clear of this one for a little bit and just see how the format goes and finally rounding up our spell lineup we have the forceful century banned in april 2005 Fossil Sentry is very much like Confiscation in the fact that you would look at your opponent's hand, select one card among them and return it to his or her deck and then you obviously shuffle the deck. Fossil Sentry gives the player who plays it an unfair advantage of being able to know what is in their opponent's hands. Not only that, it means that you can choose what card you want to shuffle back into the deck. It's insanely good. A card called Pot of Taboos currently has one of the effects of Forceful Sentry, being able to look at your opponent's hand, shuffle something back in, and that is even insane. If you pull it off, it's just so stupid, but the fact that Forceful Sentry is just a spell card, a free one at that, you can just activate with no cost. 
<sighs> yeah, it's too good. So Force of Century needs to stay banned for a very long time, if not forever. Because being able to look at your opponent's hand and generate that much knowledge and advantage on your opponent, and not only that, negging them at the same time, it's just far too good. So that is it, guys, for the spell lineup. I hope you did enjoy it, and make sure to stay tuned for the traps. Leave a comment down in the section below, out of the spells, which ones you think can return and which ones can't return. So... As usual in the previous one, we want a spell card that can return, a spell card that could return, and a spell card that really shouldn't return. So as I said, let me know down in the comment section below. Make sure to give me a like, comment, subscribe, and make sure to stay tuned for the final part.